Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Lamenters. It has been a minute in real life. Life has been busy, but we're all glad to be back at our virtual gathering for this game. Continuing this adventure, you guys uh, have had some time at the Chateau and have discovered um, some things that are very strange, perhaps, or mysterious. And you've had some encounters with some of the characters who live and work at the Chateau. Um, but following an extravagant multi-course banquet um, served to you by Chef Hervis and his lovely wife, the kitchen maid Mondette, um, with some musical accompaniment that just completely enthralled you. Uh, you were later introduced to your host who had been there the entire time, none other than Lord Judain himself, who was actually playing the music for you. Um, some deep conversations uh, followed that. And as the hour grew late, Lord Judain uh, concluded your banquet and uh, had his servants uh, lead you to your rooms. You guys, some of you uh, explored your rooms and kind of checked some things out, discovering some different things along the way. So we are picking up now where it is night. The hour is late. Um, the candles and candelabras and chandeliers have all been extinguished and you are all in your respective rooms. So I guess what I need to know is what each of you are doing. And also, who remembers which side of the mansion they were on? There's the west wing and the east wing. I think I was, I was on the, the east, east wing. West with wing. The red, with the red walls. I was in a blue room. All right. I can't Fire's remember green. which wing. I think I wanted to be in the west, but I ended up in the east. You were in, you were in the east, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the east wing has blue and red rooms. The west wing had green rooms. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead. Right. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say everybody who was in a blue or red room that's in the west wing, raise your hand. Don't remember. I, 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 I don't I, remember I, nothing. Okay. So well, Bane was in a red room. I know that for sure. All right. I was so, in a green room. So Bane. I was and in the east wing in a red room. Oh. Bane and Claude, um, and who else would have been in a red or blue room? I was in a blue room. I'm pretty sure I was East Wing with them. Okay, so I Haverter, Haverter, Bane, um, B-Boy and Sarah, and Claude, all of you guys? I, I think so. There are five rooms, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that makes sense. So you guys are in the East Wing. It's night. The house is quiet. What would you like to do, if anything? I'm having trouble sleeping. I uh, knock on the wall next to me and see if any of my compatriots are, are awake. OK, you guys hear a knock on the wall. Who? Is anyone awake? I'll just yes. back. Someone's sleeping. <laughs> Someone tell me a story. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, I, I can't hear that probably because I went upstairs to the secret room and <laughs> despite the fact that I told uh, Lord Judain that uh, uh, GM should uh, go to bed and meet me tomorrow. I want to try my... I, I want to test my hypothesis that uh, yeah, he will come nonetheless. So I'll sleep there. I'll take some blankets or whatever and go to that room. Maybe if he comes, um, he can give me 
more insight into the situation. So you're going to go up the secret stairs to yeah, the yeah. tower. Okay. You go up there. You do not see anyone. You do see the windows that look out over the back of the house. I look, I look outside of those windows and think about what the little boy told me. Okay. And you, you see that as night has come, there's kind of a fog uh, from the forest, but it seems to have also kind of lightly entered the, the grounds of the, of the chateau. And you, you see a single figure who seems to be moving from the stables. It's like a flickering candle is all the light that that person has. And, and through the moonlight and that little candle, you see this figure moving sort of slowly from the stables towards the back of the chateau. I open the window and... Cannot. This... Okay. The windows are, are not able to be opened. They're leaded glass windows. Okay. In that case, I'm trying to look at that person as far as I can and try to look what they are doing and if it won't be that interesting i'll probably go to sleep okay um make a wisdom roll under oh gosh uh, roll under yeah you know that that yeah, ability yeah. score that you have yeah, a yeah. six in yeah uh no <laughs> i ha i have I have wisdom six and I rolled 15. Okay. You just see the, the figure of what you presume is an adult moving from the stables. And, and after a moment, they, they've kind of gone underneath your window, presumably to the back of the chateau. Yeah, I don't think that's very interesting for me. So okay. I try to go back to sleep. All right. To Bane. I lay on my back. I can't sleep. I turn to my side. Damn it, I still can't sleep. I lay on my stomach. I don't like laying on my stomach. I can't breathe very well. So I get up and I look for a stone to sharpen my axe. There are no stones in your room. I must leave the room. Do I know? Do I remember? Was there anything in the armory that I might use to sharpen my axe? There could be um you didn't get like a full search of it but there there could be what of the walls made of most of the walls seem to be plaster that are painted or have like extravagant wallpaper um but you do remember a few like stone structural columns and stuff that maybe you could use i'll grind my axe on the stone column if i can find it well, that would require you going downstairs. Smash cut back to Sarah. Well, I get in my nightshirt. Oh, the nightshirt that's provided me. Put on a pair of slippers. Put on a, a robe of some sort that's hanging around. Mm -hmm. And I grab a candle and light it. Okay. And I'm gonna try to find the library interesting choice smash cut to haberder since uh since bane can't sleep i'm also gonna get out of bed and i'm just going to accompany bane all right um i'm going to assume because realism that none of you are wearing armor no are you bringing anything with you it's my axe no, maybe a dagger really. maybe a dagger just in case i mean fair enough claude just this massive hear... dude walking around with an axe in his <laughs> jammies <laughs> <That's hilarious. laughs> um claude you hear the sounds of like your neighbors in the neighboring rooms like mm -hmm. you hear people moving around what would you like to do <clears throat> um basically just I haven't explored my room all that bit, all that well uh, beforehand. Um, just doing the tagging of that uh, Lee Castle sigil. 
Uh, so I want to do a better, <clears throat> now that I have more time, basically until morning, to do a more thorough search of the room. Okay. And just basically wonder what the other guys were up to, but not at this time being too concerned about it to check up. Um, make a wisdom roll under. Uh, no, that's a natural 20. Oh, really? <laughs> what a travesty. Okay, roll percentile dice for me. And tell me what the result is. 88. 88. Fun times with tables. Okay, you hear a knock. You hear a knock at your door. Um, yeah, and actually, <clears throat> all of you that are in this area also hear a knock. But you're assuming that it's coming from within Claude's room. Sounds like it's in that direction. Are we already out of our rooms? Or are we yeah, still I'm going to say that you're it? like you're in the, the, the kind of hallway where all, all the rooms come out of uh, or into. And, and you hear a knock, and it sounds like it was from the direction of Claude's room. Claude, you're in your room, and you hear a knock that sounds like it's from outside of your door. I go and open it. Okay, you open the door, and you see three of your friends. Uh, you see Bane, you see Sarah, and you see Haverder wearing robes and pajamas. Um, Sarah's carrying a candle, and uh, Bane has his axe. Uh, what are you guys up to? I'm, I'm going to the library. Uh, by the way, none of them were close enough to my door. No, they were all like six feet away when you opened the door. Who have you knocked? What do you want to... I knocked earlier from my room. Is that what no, you mean? Just... We heard the knock, but there was no one there. Yeah. Uh, it sounded like it was coming from inside our my room. I, I wasn't going to go back, but... No, it came from my room, not yours. Oh, okay. Um, no, I didn't knock on my door. I heard knocking on the other side of it, so... And none of you knocked on my door? No. no. Okay, that's I was surprised thing. to see these two out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's creepy then, because if not, none of you knocked, then and you heard knocking, I didn't knock on the door, then what or who did? You know, old houses like this make funny noises all the time. I wouldn't worry about it. I'm going to rap on the door again. or Well, first time, actually. See if that sounds the same as the, the the knock it came we all heard. It does not. When you knock on the door, it sounds more solid. All right. <clears throat> Very interesting. Hmm. That's like I said, creepy. Does anyone have any experience with the uh, supernatural? <laughs> nope. Only what my crazy aunt told me, which none of us believe, so... Well, I might be willing to listen to that story. It might be true. Oh, it's... It's all just... weird. I, I give an example of a an old wives type of story. That's the kind of stuff she talked about, you know. It's just, yeah, she told me I had some affinity to some element or yeah water she said i had an affinity to water I, I don't understand what that is i do like to swim but smash cut to the other wing um old red and lieber what are you doing you are in your respective rooms I had been planning to see if I could find somebody to accompany me back downstairs. I wanted to take another look at the fireplace because it was that passageway underneath and the um, the sword above it. 
but I was going to look in my room first to see if I could find some kind of clothing that could uh, hide my rapier as I walked around with it. There are numerous options um, in, in the closet. Um, robes. There's, you so know. I find, I find a, I'm going to find like a light rope so in case I could say like I'm going out for a walk. It was a little chilly out. And I want to take sure. my rapier with me and uh, see if I could find somebody to accompany me downstairs. Okay. Um, Oldred happens to be present. Oldred, you're in the room next door to Lieber. You hear some, you hear like an armoire opening. You hear some sounds from Lieber's room. Yeah, I, I uh, had already been planning my own little expedition and I just put on my regular clothes, leaving my backpack and armor, but I do tuck my dagger in my belt and head out the door. Okay. Lieber, you hear Old Red open the door. So I'm going to step into the hallway, I'm trying to be stealthy, not making too much noise. Okay, you see each other. Uh, do either of you decide to bring a candle? Because it is dark. Uh, I do now because it is dark. I do bring a candle. Okay. I also do. Um, Lieber, go ahead and make me a percentile roll. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. That's a superb number. Um, as you guys step out into the hallway, kind of outside of your your rooms, you see a little bit of a flickering light from the crack underneath the door adjacent to the rooms. Was that where um, Leonard is staying? No, this is... I don't think you actually saw this room before. Oh. So, what would you like to do? Uh, walking out into the hall, we end up See, I end up seeing Lieber and I'm, I ask him, like, oh, what are you doing this fine evening? I was about to head downstairs. I was as well. I wanted to take a look at that uh, passage in the fire, uh, in a fireplace or so the other day. But do you know if there's anyone in this room here that was a candle or a light flickering in me? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think any of our companions were staying in that room. I'm going to go over and knock on the door. You knock on the door. There is no response. And Oldred, as you're standing next to Lieber, you notice as Lieber knocks on the door, a few moments after that, you saw the candlelight gone. Okay. Interesting. They must, whoever it is, they must be going to bed for the night. Don't want to be disturbed. I don't want to be quite unaware as you're going to walk around the castle, so I'm going to, I'm going to open the door and take a look in. All right, you open the door. You have a candle. And you see a room that looks to be kind of like a study. Like there's a a, a sizable desk with a number of books stacked up on it and shelves, built-in shelves, floor to ceiling made of sturdy, like perhaps oak uh, with like ornate carving along the edges. Looks like a very nice study. You see a candle on the desk and you see a trail, just a wisp of smoke as if somebody just blew it out. A little bit of moonlight's coming into the room from the windows behind the desk. But no obvious other exit or entry room and entry point? 
you do see a door to the south, but it's closed, and you didn't hear a door open or close. I'm gonna to turn to Oldred. Uh, what do you what do you make of this? It is quite strange seeing that recently extinguished candle, and we didn't hear anyone leave the room. Uh, do there look like there could be any places to hide? I step inside the room to get a better look. You see that the chair to the desk is kind of pulled out a bit. Like it's mm-hmm. not tucked into the desk. Someone just sat in it or got up? Perhaps. Perhaps. I want to do a quick search uh, of the room. Oh. Yeah, I'll assist in that. I'm going to do my own little walk around. As you guys are walking around, kind of come around the desk and you see like two boots sticking out from underneath the desk. Oh. As if someone's perhaps hiding underneath yeah. the desk. Who might you be there under the desk? I say out loud. You hear a voice kind of sounds familiar. I, I am I am unarmed. Do not bring harm to me, please. I would not. Please come out. You see the dark shaggy hair emerge first and then the the bearded face looks up at you and between the moonlight behind him and your candles you see the face of Martin the stable master oh he looks up at you guys and 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 he puts his hands up as if to show that he's not carrying any weapons why were you hiding just holding my candle he he says and he kind of looks, he's like, does does anyone else know that you are here? Any of the other staff? No. Mm-hmm. And he kind of slowly nods. He says, you came here just earlier today, did you not? Yes. Yeah. Said, where, where did you come from? That's a mystery in itself, to be quite honest. Uh, not too long ago, we were. Some of us were not all together at the same time, but I woke up with another person of my uh, troop here, and we were halfway into a stream, and then we came upon our other companions, but we all don't really know how we got to where we were. And then we found our way here. He says, what year is it? I don't remember what I'm supposed to know about that, because I know I do know the year. <laughs> uh, like 1119 or something? Yeah, because it was on our coins. It was on our coins. So I say whatever that number is, and I think it was 1120. Yeah, 1120, I think it was. 1120. He says, 11.20? Are you sure? I am not yes. sure, I'll be honest. I agree I, with my friend here. Our, our sense of time has been has felt a little off since we've awoken. Something we've been investigating as we've uh, been exploring is to find out what year it is. Is there something you'd like to share with us? Have you met Lord Judain? Yes. We had dinner, and he was playing music for us. Did you tell him what year it was? Did we? I don't remember. Libra. I think the, the, the year came up, but I don't recall if we mentioned it directly to him. Right. I don't know if we mentioned our our. He says, I would situation. strongly recommend not telling anyone what year it is. Why is that? He says, there is something very strange about this place. You, you know this. Do you not? 
I've had some feelings about it. He says... What year do you think it is? It is not the year that they think that it is. Could you give me a specific number? Do you know what they think it is? I believe that they think that the year is perhaps in the late 800s. Perhaps perhaps before the fall of Nargenheim. Before the fall of Nargenheim? Um, actually, both of you are learned people. I have six intelligence. Yes, but... One My of wisdom you, is really high, though. One of you in particular, um, Lieber, you, you would have some context based on your studies in the clergy. You're fairly sure, certain that the fall of Nargenheim was estimated to be somewhere around the year 900. Okay. And if Martin just told you that the staff and Lord Judain believe that the year is somewhere in the late 800s, that you're fairly certain as well that it would have to be like the 890s because... Somewhere in that range, in the 800s, were the wars of nobility and the anointing of the nobility by the different churches in that era, in that century. Okay. Um, and that is what Martin is telling you. Smash cut back to the East Wing. <laughs> you guys are all in your hallway. What do you want to do? This Bane mentioned cool. that he wants to sharpen his axe on a stone column down in the armory. Uh, someone else mentioned wanting to perhaps go to the library. Yeah. Well, the library is right down the hall, just past the staircase. Oh. Okay, well, I would uh, recommend uh, wherever you guys are going to get a candle. I mean, it's pretty dark here. I think we should stay together. We should follow you to the library. You sure? I think we should stay together. Okay. Uh, oh. Is Claude coming with us? Or is he uh, um, going to settle? Yeah, I'll come. I'll go back in and see if there's um, uh, a candle holder or something with a candle lit. Yes. And bring it. Every room has a small uh, candlestick in the figure. Um, yeah, I'll grab my candle as well and go on out. Okay. Uh, Habert, are you were, you're also accompanying them. Um, you, you guys are all walking down the hall towards the library? Yes. Yeah, and I do t tuck my sword in my belt. Okay. As, and as you guys are getting closer, you pass by the stairs, and a little bit further down the hallway, not more than maybe 20 feet, you, you notice... There's a flickering candlelight that you see under the, the, the crack of the closed door. And actually, the door to the library is not even completely closed. It's like open a crack. But you see some flickering light from inside. From inside the library? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, before we go in, I say, um, how many of you can are able to look at books and get ideas from them. <laughs> Haverder? No. Claude? Yeah. Bane? I can't read. Ah, but you can you can look at pictures and maps and that will be useful. I like pictures. Good. Okay. I'll uh I'll go to the door and push it open and shine my candle in there. Okay. Um so you see the library. Now, who amongst you had already seen the library in a brief tour? I believe it was perhaps Bane. Was it you that was taken on a little tour by Isabel? I was. Okay, so you guys walk in the library. Um, the first thing you notice is that it is a mess. Like, there are books just all over the floor and, like, flipped open and just 
like tables that just have books stacked up on them and the shelves are a mess and the, there's books like hanging halfway off. Uh, almost like a, like a hurricane just went through this room. You see an older woman who, uh, Sarah, because you were the one that encountered her, uh, who you recognize as Claretta. And, and she's, there, there's a, a candle that's lit on one of the tables and she's just looking around mystified, like as if she cannot even fathom this mess. Um, Bane, you don't remember the library looking this messy like an hour ago. Oh, I was just here and it was no, there was no mess. It was quite tidy. As you Something say is... this, Claretta turns around at all of you, a, a panicked look on her face. And she's like, ah, what, what am I to do? Uh, the, the, the master was, will be furious that his books are not in the proper order. Uh, can any of you help me? Well, of course. We will help. And I put my candle down somewhere safe and I start, uh, you know, closing books and she's putting them safely on the table. And she, she, she's like, if he comes soon, uh, he will be most upset. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, She's just looking around at the books. What happened well, here? I, I, I do not n know. It's Everything is in such disarray. Oh, the master shall be most displeased. Well, Claretta, start by picking up books, closing them, and putting them neatly on the table. Or what you can do is the books that are spread out on the table close them up and stack them neatly and we'll pick up these books and put them on the table and then we'll figure out where they go it's not well, a tragedy that was, that was very well played marie i'm gonna have you go ahead and make a charisma roll oh roll under roll under good because i have a decent charisma do i um do the plus one to that no, you just roll as low as you can with a roll under. <laughs> okay, let's see. 20-sided die. Not a 30-sided die. 20-sided die. And here we go. Four. Your words seem to have kind of a soothing effect. And you, you notice, like, she still looks distressed, but not completely panicked. And, and she kind of nods and and, and uh, Haberter, what are you doing during this moment? Start helping pick up the books, follow uh, Sarah's lead. Okay. And I'll just uh, say, this is what people's houses look like when they read. I'm glad I can't. Um, and you start doing that. You're you're just kind of starting with the basics, picking up books off the ground, kind of stacking them. Claude, what are you doing in this endeavor? Um, I go pick up the books, um, facing the, uh, facing out to, out the door. Okay. Uh, and as I'm picking them up, I'm just checking to see if there's any, uh, date in the books, like, written in. You are literate, correct? Yeah. So. I have 11 intelligence. I'm, I'm going to have you Fairly. make an intelligence roll under. And while you're doing that, Bane, what are you doing in this endeavor? I'm picking my teeth with my ex. Okay. It was uh, five against I'll, 11. I'll, so... I'll, I'll lean my ex up against the table and help stack the books. Okay, you start stacking books. Um, Haberder is stacking books. Claude, as you are kind of picking these books up, you notice that the subject, the range of subjects, just within the books that you picked up and looked at, is vast. There, there are books about botany, herbalism, uh, apothecary. There's history books. There's books about different noble houses. There's books about finance and land management. Like every subject that you could 
sea just seems to be represented in this vast array. Um, all of you, all of you make a wisdom roll under. Ten. Just tell me if it's a success or a failure. Fail. Success. success. Fail. Success from Sarah and and from Claude? Claude. Yep. Okay. So as everybody begins to help, you're, you're picking up books, you're stacking them. Claude, you're kind of looking at them, trying to figure out some semblance of order. Um, Sarah and Claude, you notice... You notice Claretta reach down to pick up a book, but she can't seem to pick it up. She puts her fingers on it, but then, like, goes to another book, puts her fingers near it, and then goes to go another book. And then she goes to an open book and tries to close it, and you notice that her left hand seems to pass through the book. How does she react to those not closing or picking it up? With frustration and distress but she doesn't say anything she just continues to repeat these actions that fail okay and, and on the <laughs> attempt to close the book you noticed her hand actually pass through it Loretta Loretta hello yes. yes mom why don't you take a seat and rest for a while but just but the for, library. That's okay. We'll take care of it. I think you need a little bit of rest. It is late. Just sit down for a while. You, you, and she looks around. You, you will, you will put everything in its proper place. We will try. Yes. Oh, thank you, Mum. Thank you, good sirs. And she, she kind of nod, bows, and then sort of like walks over towards a chair. And she sits down. She just seems to be watching you. Smash cut back to the West Wing. Martin slowly emerges from underneath the desk. And he looks at you and he says, I am not a staff member here. My name is not Martin. What is it? Who are you? My name is Jonas. I am a, a trapper and a hunter by trade. I am not sure from where you come, but I am from the borderlands, from a small community called Morath. I was on a hunt in the forests across the river and north of Oak Point when a terrible storm came through. My visibility was next to nothing, but I stumbled through the forest and found myself approaching this chateau, seeking shelter made my way through a very strange hedge, a series of hedges, almost almost like a maze of some kind, and found myself on the property during the storm and could not find anyone around. Made my way to the, the, the main doors of the chateau and knocked, but no one answered. I went from building to building until at last I found the stables, and inside the stables, was a man who somewhat resembled me. But he was not normal. His face had deep scars. Without warning, he attacked me with intent to kill me. I fought him off. And ultimately, I, I hit him in the head with a brick. I didn't know what to do, so I put his body underneath a clump of hay and hid there. When the storm had passed in the morning, this young boy came to the stables and addressed me as Martin and asked me what chores 
he had to do. So I assumed this part of what I assumed was perhaps the master of the stables. I have been playing this role for a number of days, which I cannot now even begin to count. Perhaps weeks. None of the other staff members have interacted with me directly so far. I've been able to speak out some glimpse of their strangeness. This place is beset by some curse, truly. I have seen things at night here which give me great pause. I have heard terrible sounds from within the chateau. Why haven't you left? I have tried, my friend. Every night, for weeks, I have tried. There is some spiritual power which binds those who are inside to this place. I do not know what the secret is, what means of escape there may be, but I tell you now that this place, is, it is not right. Lord Jardine did mention something about being held here. Odred, I, I don't like the sound of this. I think we should find everyone else and see a way to get out of here. There's some That's things fun. I want to investigate still. Maybe you can go find them and I'm going to go check out that sword that we saw earlier. He says, I do not know what this place is or why it is the way it is. But I caution you that the people who you have seen are not as they have appeared. Things change here. There were other visitors who came here before you, after my arrival. I have not seen them since. You have been lucky to survive so far. Please, if you find a way out, come get me at the stables. I much desire to return home and see my family. I promise you I shall. You have my thanks. I, I must sneak out now and return to the stables. I, I was hoping to find some clue or some evidence in this study, but I have found nothing but more questions, more mysteries. Okay. He says, I'm gonna... let me show you. He, he, he goes over to the, to the desk and he pulls out a ledger book and he begins showing you, he's holding the candle up and he shows you, and you see some dates listed for li different land management records and they seem to indicate the year 896 he says this is, odd. this is the newest of the ledger books that i was able to find i tell you again this doesn't... <clears throat> it is not what it appears to be this does not bode well no, I find it particularly strange that we have found ourselves out of time, and this place seems to be even further out of time. I'm wondering, were we really in our current time before, and then we came into now, or in a different place altogether in time? It says, how do you know that the year is 1120? I produced a coin, one of the new ones, and... When we all woke up, all of us, my companions that I've met with, we all have, we were given money for with something we don't even really know yet, but the date on this coin is 1120. And it appears to be newly minted. They all do. Yes. Yes. All of our coins are of the same condition, new. And that is 
your most recent memory? Uh, yes. He said, I'm not sure how to tell you this. 1120 was some time ago. What year is it? What time was it for you? It is the year 1134. Knew it. He says, Well, says, we should not linger. Strange things happen in this house at night. Beware, my friends. I am going to sneak back down and hide out in the stables. If you find a means of escaping this place, please, I would be most grateful to all measures of my life if you come and get me. I promise I shall. You will. And he he nods. You notice that he carefully puts the ledger book back on a specific spot on the shelf. And then he takes his candle and like nods to you and he goes out. Smash cut back to the east wing. You guys spend an hour stacking books, picking them up off the floor. And as you do that, Claude, you begin to kind of sort them by by genre by subject Mm -hmm. okay you do this and it takes all of you guys working together an hour to restore this library to some semblance of order as i'm as i'm walking around carrying these books to the shelves can i accidentally bump into the uh, the mate yes and do I make contact or do I glide through her? You bump into the chair. And she says, oh, Pardon me, good sir, pardon me. <laughs> no, sorry, my mistake. I I, would do, I wasn't careful enough. I'm uh, looking at the shelves and just uh, helping Claude try to decide what is the proper place to put things in. And while I'm doing that, I'm looking for... Are you literate? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So (laughs) between you and Claude, between you and Claude, you're able to kind of put things into into order by subject. You're you're kind of organizing the books by subject. I want to hold out uh, the books on the... This family and other noble families whose names I recall. Okay. Especially my own, if possible. So, uh, um, the books seem to focus on the noble families of the Western kingdoms. There's like hmm. one brief, there, there are a few, I'll say not one, but maybe a few brief um, treatises on the noble families of the Eastern Kingdoms, as well as, but but the majority of them are about the noble families of the Western Kingdoms. I'll concentrate on the Eastern Kingdoms. Okay. Um, in so doing, I would say that you're able to determine that the older books describe noble families from the Eastern Kingdoms um but there's nothing nothing about the eastern church anointing those families hmm. so your sense is that the nobility of the eastern kingdoms is derived from land ownership not anointing by the church which you know as a family as an as a member of a noble family that at least to your recollection for a noble family to be recognized it has to have been anointed by the church which happened yeah, and my, which yeah, happened and, centuries ago yeah and my family has land yes you um, um Actually, since your family does business with Southport, I'll tell you this. 
You also don't find any books about Southport or its politics or its nobility. There's a reference to Southport as a trade city. That's it. Hmm. Upon completion of the reordering of the library, you see a look of absolute relief just come over Claretta, and she kind of slowly gets up from the chair. And all of you at this point notice that her hands aren't actually pushing on the arms of the chair, but she, she kind of pantomimes this movement and sort of gets up and she says, thank you all so much for your assistance. It has truly been my salvation. And then she goes to walk out the room. Gloretta. Yes, Come Matt. here a second. Come here a second. Yes. She kind here, of let, walks here, over let towards me, you. Let, let me help you. And I put my arm around her shoulder and... Uh, you don't feel any shoulder, but you, you do that action? Yeah, I... I kind of... My eyes get big and I'm I'm looking at the guys... Yeah, you guys clearly see that Sarah's arm is not actually making any physical contact, but it looks mm -hmm. pretty close. And Clara is uh, like, thank you, ma'am. You're so kind. Yes. Uh, has this happened before in this library? And you, you see a look of confusion over her face, and she says, well, well, I... Well, I don't remember, ma'am. No, I don't think so. Do you remember yesterday? Before well, we came here? Yes. Uh, yes, I think so. It was a normal day here at the Chateau. The, the normal chores and whatnot. Do you remember other visitors coming here? No, ma'am. We we haven't had visitors in ages. What Hello, year nephew. is it? She has a look of confusion. Well, uh... You know, ma'am, I've I've quite forgotten. You'll have to forgive me in an old lady's memory. Well, that's okay. I'm sure you need to get to sleep. Yes, thank you, ma'am, and thank you all for helping to put things right. Do she, you any? Do has, you have any questions? No, um, I was thinking soon earlier, like I wanted to go behind her chair and try and touch her head or something, yep. poke her without Nothing. out of sight of herself and Com completely but, incorporeal. Yeah, she, um, with that, without any further ado, then she kind of starts making her way to the door. Um, she walks out the door without opening it. Uh, okay. I never closed it, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. She walks out the door. You see uh, her through the candlelight walking down the hallway, and then she turns left to turn down the stairs. Did she cut off any light of her own when walking, or is it just... No... No. Well, that's to be expected of someone who's been in the house for a long time. They just know their way, but um, I think we have just encountered a ghost. Yep. Boy, I didn't expect a ghost to be so nice. Oh, so or to be that, that ignorant of their ghostliness. Yes, I don't believe she even knows that she is past. Yeah. 
Um, Marie, roll a percentile roll. Okay. Here we go. 78. Okay. So, you guys have put the library back into order. What would you like to do now? So, uh, Bane, did you still want to go to the armory, or was that enough of a ghost story for you? I find this very strange, strange indeed. And if it's possible to stick around in the afterlife, I wonder what other strange things we might find in this castle. I am interested in the Lady Katharina. I can't remember. Oldrad, did you tell us about your vision in the tub? He's not there. I I, I was oh, I was asking out of character. Yeah. I honestly don't remember. Okay. I have to watch the last episode still. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Um, I'm interested in this Lady Katharina. I mean, she had her name written on those pears that almost killed uh, Bivoy. And, uh, you know, that's, that must be some kind of magic. B-Boy, do you have any of those fruits left? Uh, I think I uh, managed to hide one. Okay. Everything else was dumped into the uh, outhouse. Okay. All right. So where now? Um. I asked Bane if he still wanted to go to the armory. Yes, let's go to the armory, my friend. I must. Okay. I must think while I sharpen my ox. So you wish to go down the stairs to the main level to to the armory. I've been wondering about that st- uh, stone we found in that cave, uh, you guys found in the cave. Yes. It's the same as this place. Well, it's the same what as the sword. We it? I wonder if they knew, if we were to tell them, if we were to show them that they weren't among the living, what type of reaction they would have. It could be quite interesting or it could be quite deadly. I'm thinking both. As you contemplate this, mm-hmm. Smash got back to the West Wing. Lieber and Oldred, what do you do now? Uh, I turn to Lieber and I say, I think we both had the same idea about going in to investigate that main room that we were having dinner in. I agree, but I think we should find the rest just to let them know what's going on. I think we're in a very dangerous situation. Uh, I'm going to continue on to the main room. Okay, I'm going to go if with you. Want. I just, I, 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 okay. I, yeah, it's better not to split. Um, let's go down and see what we can find. Then we'll go find our companions. Okay. Okay, so you guys want to go back downstairs? Yes. Yes, please. And, um... If you go downstairs, you could go to the grand staircase and then into the high hall, which mm-hmm. would bring you back into the, the dining room, which had the the um, fireplace. Is that kind of your destination? Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Make another percentile roll. This time, uh, who did the last one? Patrick. I so, think all right, Kale, make, a, make me a percentile roll, if you would. 89. Well, that is interesting. Okay, as you guys are descending the stairs, you see a portrait, presumably one of the members of the noble house of IRA. It looks like an older oil painting of like a distinguished noble looking man. 
and by the clothing in in the portrait that he's wearing, you you kind of get the sense that it's um maybe you know uh, uh, dated by a couple centuries. It kind of looks like something that somebody would have worn in in like ye olde times. And you notice that the eyes move and they follow you as you're walking down the stairs. I hope I, I did we, we catch that? Yes. Now, to be uh, clear, as you look closer, <laughs> as you look closer, I don't want you to think that this is like a painting where the eye holes are cut out and there's somebody behind right. it. I yeah, mean, yeah, literally yeah. in the painting, the painting's the eyes. eyes. And they're now, as you stop to look up, they're looking at you. Uh, I I'm stop. Look at the painting. And <laughs> yeah. Can you can you hear us? I hold my candle closer. The eyes blink. Can you blink? Does twice? it like say say again? I asked the uh, painting if he can blink twice. It blinks twice. I look at all drive. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we could ask some uh, some yes or no questions. I think with that type of uh, interaction, perhaps. Um, Are you trapped? Blink twice if trapped. Yes. You see the mouth move. The painting speaks. Oh. And you hear that you hear that response. Oh shit! Um, uh, oh shit! Yes or no question? Um, is there a way to free you? Blink twice for yes. There may be, but I do not know. If Wait, is there sound coming out? Yeah, he's speaking to you now. Oh, shit. <laughs> he says, there may be, but I do not know if my descendant would allow such a thing. Do we need Lord Judain's permission to free you? He is a cruel, cruel man. Um, you are, are here danger? to entertain him. Hmm. What kind of entertainment? The kind that allows him to enjoy your suffering. Mm, the deadly kind, it seems like. It sounds like it. Do you know how we can leave this place? I do not know. I can only see what I behold here. Do you recall how you were put there? I died long ago, and somehow he trapped my spirit in this. There was a time where he would ask me numerous questions, and I assisted him what? and answered him to the best of my knowledge in the hopes that he would release me from this fate. Would simply destroying your painting release you, do you think? I do not know. What kinds of questions was he asking you? Questions pertaining to history. Questions about the church. Questions about some things which he should not have asked. A jazz, can you share? He asked me of forbidden things, of witchcraft and devilry, things about the old gods, things about Nargenheim. Do I recall what Nargenheim is? Uh, well, you're not the most learned man. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, like, maybe related to anything to my, uh, I would say studies. that 
I mean, basically, Nargenheim is like the Atlantis of of your land, okay. like a a mythical kingdom that might have existed long ago. That's that's okay. about what your grasp of that would be. Okay. Is Lord Jordan a man? A human? He was. I am not sure what he is now. He does not pass through this hallway any very much anymore. I do recall seeing a man and a woman scrambling up these stairs, perhaps some weeks ago. They were bloody, wounded and injured. They seemed to be fleeing from something. Do you know how long you've been here in this painting? I cannot say anymore. Perhaps very long. Do you know Martin? I do not know this person. I only know what I knew in my life and what I have seen since I've been imprisoned here. We got, oh gosh, um, so many things to do. I think we should go investigate that fireplace. We might find one something last, of interest down, down. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I think one, one last question. Is there anything you need us to do for you before we go? I would be most grateful to be released from this imprisonment. I only know, well, I don't know, but I can offer to destroy your painting. Perhaps that'll release you. You need only ask. Very well. I pull out my dagger and stab the portrait in the heart, see if that does anything, and I start to carve it up. You stab the portrait in the heart. The man screams out in pain. And you see blood begin to flow from the painting. Down your dagger and down your arm, splattering you in the face. Ah! 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 And he, he undulates and struggles in the painting. Uh, uh, gosh. I'm going to take, um... take my rapier and try to finish him with it. <laughs> Okay. Out of his misery. You do. His movement stops. As <laughs> both of you withdraw your blades, the portrait's basically now taken on a death pose. Like his head's kind of cocked back, his eyes are stare off into the distance. And the blood, the physical, actual blood, drips down the painting from the two wounds mm -hmm. that you inflicted. I think we should Smash cut thing. back yeah. to the East Coast. <laughs> Old Red is shook. <laughs> okay, East Wing people, you said that you wanted to go to the armory, right? Right. Go down the stairs with your candles, and you're going down quietly, and you get down to the eastern edge of the armory, and you look out, and you see the columns, and you see the rows of, like, suits of armor, and you see some tapestries. There's a little bit of moonlight coming in from outside, but other than that, you just have your candles. I'm looking for a stone surface. I'm just gonna wash these suits of armor. Okay. You see a, a column right next to you when you first enter. And right next to that is a suit of armor. In a soothing, relaxing motion, I... I I run my blade around, along the stone. <laughs> okay, as Bane is doing that, Sarah, what are you doing? You're mm -hmm. muted. I'm looking around as far as I can see with the candle at all the portraits at whatever is in this area holding my candle high so I can see farther 
Okay. Um, B-Boy, are you still sleeping up in the attic? Yes? I'm trying to. Okay. Very good. Haverder, what are you doing? Can I, like, lift the visor for, for the armor? Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. And while we're at it, why doesn't everybody just roll a d6 for initiative? I knew that. Haunted houses, la la la. Got a one. Oh no! What did Sarah get? Oh wait, that's I'm putting it in the chat. Right? A D six for initiative. Sixes. Okay. Do I add dexterity to that or anything? Right, um, sure. Why not? Okay, so I will revise that as soon as I find my character sheet. Claude, what'd you get? Uh, six plus one for dex, making it seven. I got an eight. <clears throat> okay. You lift the visor up, and the suit of armor comes to life and tries to grab your throat. Bane, you hear this suit of armor moving. You see Haverder as as this suit of armor is reaching out to grab his throat. I his take stomach. my axe. I take my axe and turn from where I'm sharpening it and swing it down on the two arms of the... Uh... Excellent. Make an attack roll. 16. That's a hit. Roll damage. Oh. Hey, hey. Seven. Seven damage. Nice. Sarah, you also hear the creaking of the armor, and you see it lunging out towards Haverder's neck. You have a candle in one hand and a dagger in your robe, uh, robe belt. What do you like to do? Um... I need to find the rest of the crew. Um, I go to the west wing. Okay, that's um, about a hundred feet away. So you're that's gonna cross okay. the whole hall. I'm gonna I'm gonna run. Yeah. Okay, so you start moving. Uh, Did she leave us? <laughs> I turned and looked. You see the light. I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm getting the rest of the the crew. All right, Claude. What do you do? Um, <clears throat> I see the other guy attack the the. the um, you see uh, him lunging towards Haberger. Yeah, but also seeing um, Old Red before something uh, axing away at it. So, yes. um, I'm gonna draw my sword and turn around and look for any other dangers. Make a wisdom roll on her. No, it's... Nope. Okay. The clanging sound is happening. You're you're uh, kind of looking around to look for other potential dangers. Have it or it's your turn. Uh, can I slip around and try and put him in a grapple? Oh, yes. Let's make a... My arms under his arms? arms. Yes. Go, go ahead and make an attack roll. Add your strength bonus. That is a... D six? D twenty. D twenty. D twenty. Add your strength bonus. Twelve. You actually slip out and, and turn around and kind of put him in a headlock. And the armor's like flailing and trying to move and you're like holding it. And then as Sarah's turn. running down the hall, three other sets of armor animate. Oh, no. One of them, from across from where you are, steps off of its pedestal and start and pulls out its sword and starts running towards Claude. The other two step off of their pedestals and are running to intercept Sarah. Uh, the one with the sword attacking Claude swings the sword and just barely misses Claude. The two that are running after Sarah, one of them, wow, I should, 
I should screen share this, but I'm just gonna tell you. I rolled a four and a one. So one of them swings its sword, missing Sarah as she runs by. The other one swings its sword and the sword flies out of its hand and skitters across the floor. Back to the top, Bane. Are the two chasing Sarah in proximity to me from where no. I am? No, you could run okay. to them if you want. Uh, but right <clears throat> next to you, you see Haverter has this set of armor and a headlock. Well, um... And there's another one 10 feet away that is trying to attack Claude. I'm going to try to pull the helmet off of the one that Haverter has in a hold. Okay. Um... Uh... Make a, make a d20 roll, add your strength bonus. 23. Sorry, 22. That hits. What is your strength modifier? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm a like, 18, so I have a plus three. Yes. Um, okay, so you do, you rip the helmet off, and you see that the armor's still undulating now kind of wildly. But it seems to have... Like when you pulled it off, it wasn't just like taking a helmet off of like a dummy. It kind of had some give to it, almost as if there was something that you couldn't see holding this armor together and animating it, but it it, you ripped it off. Um, Sarah, there are two sets of armor trying to attack you. One of them missed and its sword skittered to the ground. The other, uh, swung and missed you. Do How you close wish- is? Excuse me. How close is the sword to me? Like ten feet away. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna keep running. I'm I'm hoping I can outrun him. You do. You continue running down the length of this long hall. And um, uh, tell me when I get to the west wing. Next round, you'll be at the doors, the far doors uh, that leave the armory. Um, Claude, proceed. <clears throat> um, just a little matter. We didn't hear that painting scream. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna try and attack the uh, armor that's trying to attack me. Um, probably gonna try to see if there's any weak points between the armor plates or something to attack. Um, uh, what what is your weapon again? Uh, just a single-handed sword. A rapier or a single-handed sword? Uh, I have it done as a, just as a sword. I have, uh, I have a two-hander okay. and a s- normal sword. Okay, so go ahead and make your attack roll. Uh, that would be 11. It clangs against the armor, but does not seem to have an impact. Um, Haberder, you currently have this armor that no longer has a head in a headlock. Would you like to continue holding this grapple? And it's still flailing around. Yes. I'll, uh, I think I'll just keep holding it for now. Hold the grapple. Okay, I'm going to make a roll. What is your strength? Uh, Plus one. Go ahead and make a roll. It might have broken out. Nine. Okay. I had a 13 plus two is 15. So it, it basically wriggles and then it kind of rolls forward and sort of not flips you over completely, but like flips you to the side breaking the gravel. That is its round. Um, The armor, the suit of armor that Claude just attacked now attacks Claude and misses with a whopping seven. Even though you're wearing pajamas, it misses. (laughs) I'm still in my dinner clothes. Um, The other two, the other two sets of armor, as, as Sarah runs past them, they turn towards where you guys are instead of following her. And one of them starts like jogging towards you. The other one runs over to pick up its sword and then starts jogging towards you. And they will be at you next round. 
top of the order, Bane. The armor that was in a grapple that you just ripped the helmet off of is now out of the grapple. I've got an idea. Yeah. Let's go go for their legs. If they can't run, they can't chase us. So I'm going to swing my axe at its legs. All right, attack away. Seventeen. That's a hit. Damage. Uh, that's a ten. I'm sorry. You, that's an eight. You smash an entire leg off, and the thing falls to the ground, and it doesn't move. Excellent. Take out uh, their legs, Sarah. As you reach the end of the western hallway, you see the double doors that open up into the west wing from the armory. Beyond those doors, you hear a terrible screaming sound of like someone clearly suffering pain. And it's like a lower register, like a male voice. Oh, no. I'm, I'm going through there. Okay, the doors are locked. You okay. could try to bash them open if you'd like to roll a d6. <laughs> Not with my strength. I, I just I just rattle them very no. very hard. I, I don't think I could bash them open. Okay. Um, you do and recall start pounding that, on them. You do recall that if you go back to the center of the armory that leads to the foyer the entrance foyer for the chateau and through the entrance foyer, you could go into the high hall, the dining room. And through the high hall, you you remember there being a set of stairs. You may be able to get to the west wing from that set of stairs. Okay, I look behind me. How many suits of armor are they fighting? <laughs> you see three suits of armor, and you see your friends, uh, you, 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 you see them fighting those suits of armor. I'll bang on three, the door. Three, we're good. You bang on the door. Smash cut. Aldred and, and Lieber, as you're pulling out your blood-soaked blades, um, Aldred with blood splattered on your face, you hear a sound from, from like, just below you, sounds like, on the main level. You hear, like, doors shaking. Mm-hmm. What do you, you hear do? that? I hear it. Let's uh, let's go check go it see out. See what's in store for us next. Damn, I wish I had more than a dagger, but let's go. <laughs> hey, you come down the stairs. You see the door that leads into the high hall, and then another door that leads to a hallway. And that door to the hallway is open. And you see, just beyond that, a set of double doors that look like they're locked, but they're shaking, like someone's trying to open them. Yeah. Let's go. I'm gonna go up to it and be like, who's there? Yeah. I'm gonna bash it open. Nope, I'm just bashing that shit. Okay. Roll me uh roll me a D6, old red. I roll the one. All right. Sarah, you need to roll me a dexterity roll under. Which shouldn't be too hard because you have an 18. Yeah. Although it'd be hilarious if you rolled like a 19 or 20. It would, wouldn't it? You'd love that, wouldn't you? Okay. Yeah. She bowls down a suit of armor. Perfect. Three. Okay. You hear the sound of someone like, who is that? And then you're like, you move back from the doors just out of instinct, and the doors burst open, and Old Red runs through, and there's like splintered wood. And he's like in his pajamas and a robe. And you see just behind him is Lieber holding a candle. I'm also splattered with blood holding a dagger. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I still have my rapier out. Yes. Yes. He's holding a dagger. His face is splattered with blood. Uh, Lieber has a candle in one hand and a dagger in the other. Smash cut back to the armory. Bane. Give me the layout of the... of the uh, uh... Three suits of armor left. Oops. Fighting you, Claude, and Haverter. And they're just, okay. Um, I'm going to just swing at the closest one to me. All right, swing the one that's legs. fighting Claude. Go ahead. L- legs again. 
Legs it is. 25. That's definitely a hit. How much damage? Where's my D8? There it is. Four. Four damage. All right. Sarah, you are on the other side of the hallway. You see, um, you're, I'm taking you out of initiative for right now, but you see. No, I can, I can point, I can point and tell them what's happening. Yeah. So you, you, okay. kind of, you, you gesture down the hallway, you show them what's happening. Uh, armor, suits of animated armor. My God. Where's Oldred the. And, Oldred I mean, and Lieber, you, you look down the hallway and they'll, although the faint moonlight coming through the windows doesn't illuminate everything, you see candles moving around and you see what looks like armor, full suits of plate mail armor actually moving around as Sarah's describing this to you. Claude, your turn. Um, I'm taking the hit of the uh, hint of the uh, leg attack, so I'm gonna do a like, crouch a little and do a swing to the knee. Okay. And that's a net one. All right, you swing. Your sword hits this. I need you to roll a d6. Four. Your sword clangs loudly against the armor, but doesn't seem to do anything. Haberder. Uh, the suit of armor that's down near me, does it have a sword? It did tilted? not. It did not draw its sword when it lunged out at you, but it does have a sword that's like tethered to to its uh, torso, which is no longer moving. Could I try and grab the sword and Absolutely. pull it? Absolutely. Yep. You pull the long sword out of this scabbard, and I'll come. Uh, I'll come in and try and hit the leg that, of the one that's attacking Claude. Okay. Make a melee attack roll. Is that plus strength or dex? Strength. Twelve. Hit. Oh. And then, uh... Three plus five? Eight. Okay. Another one topples down. No longer animated. The other two, however, are very animated and would like to hurt you. So I'm going to roll for them. Uh, one, two, three, Claude. Actually, one, two, Claude. Three, four, Haverter. Five, six, Bane. First attack goes to Claude. Does it hit? No. Second one attacks. Same order. This time, Haverter. Does it hit? Fifteen. Probably, since I'm not in armor. Yes. So you are going to take a whopping four damage as a a sword slices into your robe and your pajamas. Um, Oldred, Sarah, and Lieber, you are across the hall at a running pace. You can be there in two rounds. On my way. Start running. Okay. You guys are running full speed. Sarah, same thing? Yeah, I'll run toward the fray. Okay. Back to the top of the order, Bane. It's your turn. I want to finish the job I did on the one that I just hit. Uh, that one's down. Oh, it is down. Okay. Yes, on there, are the next two, one. there are two that have not been hit, and they are both wielding swords with intent to kill. All right. Closest one. 25. That's a hit. Damage? Four. Okay. Claude. Yep. <clears throat> um, I try and take the legs of the other when I get her. Okay. Armor. Okay. That's better. That's 17 makes uh, 23, 24. Hits. Damage. Three and um, plus three, I think. Six. Okay. 
I was just switching pages here. You hit it again. The leg, one of the legs buckles, but does not completely cut off. Haberter, you're up. The one that Claude just hit. I'd like yeah, to. So Bane and Claude hit this. You're going to hit it again? Yeah, I'd like to drop kick it. All right. Go ahead natural and make one. Your... Natural one. So you, natural like, one. you jump up and you kind of slip on the marble floor and you just sort of land. Uh, which gives it a perfect opportunity to attack. All right. uh, by the way, it was uh, straight up three. There's no mod uh, no uh, damage modifier on it. Okay, it's still up. Uh, that attack is going to hurt because I rolled a 17. Oh, Haverter, you take seven more damage. The Ouchie. Second one, second one will attack one, two, three, Claude, four, five, six, Bane, Bane. Oh, now my rolls are coming through. 16 to hit Bane. That's a that miss. That is going that that is totally a hit because you're not wearing armor. Oh, I'm not wearing anything. Um, you Maybe. take 8 as this sword cuts deeply into your sinewy mass. <laughs> your nice robes are torn and bloodied. Um, next round Bane, you're at the top of the order. I shall kill the one that wounded me. You hope to do so. 20. Not natural, though. That is a hit. Roll me some damage. Seven. Seven doesn't There's no kill damage it. modifiers in this, right? No. Okay. Well, okay. Up next. Hmm. So, Sarah, Lieber, and Oldred, you'll be there next round. Claude, you're up. Yep. <clears throat> Another uh, strike to the uh, kneecaps. And it's a 17. That's a hit. Give me the damage. Another three damage. You, this time you smash the kneecap. The leg falls off. The armor, uh, I'm actually going to make a roll to see if it topples. It's still animated and it falls to the ground. However, it's spinning around on the ground with its sword. I will give it a significant penalty to its attack roll. Uh, but first, Haverger, you get to go before the armor's attack. All right. So there's one on the ground that's had a leg removed, but it's still moving. And there's another one that Bane hit that is still standing. I'll go for the one that Bane hit. Okay. For the leg. Nine. Mm, that one won't do. Yeah. You swing out wildly and miss. All right, the one on the ground is going to have a minus four to attack, which is great because I rolled a two, so it completely misses. The one that's standing also rolls a two. Fuck. Fuck my entire armor life. All right. Um, <laughs> we play now, on. Old Red... Sarah and Lieber arrive on the scene. Oldred, what would you like to do? Uh, I do a running leap at the one attacking uh, Bane, and I'm trying to drive the dagger into its neck. Excellent. Make your melee attack roll. That's a natural 14, which I believe comes up to a 16. That hits. Give me the damage. D4 for daggers. Three damage. You hit it in the neck, and it undulates, but it seems to still be animated. Lieber, you're up. I'm trying to go for whichever one's closest, and if I see any hole in the armor, I want to aim for that first. The one that's on the ground is swinging around near Haverter, who you notice is wounded. The other one that's standing is fighting Bane. Which would you like, the one on the ground? Let me go for the one on the ground, then see if we... Okay, you're going to get a plus two to hit, because he's prone, so go ahead and attack. 19. That's definitely a hit. Give me the damage. <clears throat> Two. That is enough. Oh. You stab down into its neck, and the armor undulates and then stops moving immediately. Sarah, there is one suit of armor left. It seems dented and wounded, but it is vigorously attacking Bane, who also seems to be deeply cut. 
I'm gonna run up to the one that is prone and That's grab death. its sword. You grab its sword. Yeah. Okay. And uh, move with intent toward uh, the one that's attacking B. Okay. I don't know I'll, if I can get a hit in. Uh, not not from the distance and with other people nearby. Um, Bane, you're up. I will swing at this beast of whatever. <laughs> This machine of metal. 21. That's a hit. Give me the damage. Six. Six is enough to drop it as your axe cleaves the entire torso. The armor literally (laughs) falls apart and splatters on the floor. I want you to understand that you are in a huge hall with a lot of solid surfaces. The sound of all of this combat, the clanking of this armor reverberated throughout the hall. (laughs) I want you to understand that because as there is a moment of silence after this, the last hit from Bane and the armor collapsing on the ground reverberating through the hall, you hear a door creaking open. And you you see the major domo Landry emerging and you see he looks a little different in your candlelight. His skin seems to be mottled and gray. And he says, How dare you make that noise in the master's abode? And you see that frothies, frothing from his lips is kind of like, sort of like a, a, a white saliva, but it's pink, almost as if like bloodied. And you notice that he extends his hands out and he has clawed fingertips, like bones, poking through the flesh of his hand. And with a maddening look in his eye, he races towards you. Can I pick up one of the swords? Yes. Come unto me, demon. Let's see hold my how fast up. he is. <laughs> oh! Oh, he's so fast. He's a fast boy? He's a fast boy? He races <laughs> over towards you with a terrifying pace. Almost a bestial movement. Who shall be this victim? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe it's good B boys sleeping in the attic. All right. Um, <laughs> Claude. He races over towards you, jumps through the air for 15 feet through the air, and lands on top of you, trying to plunge his claws into your flesh. I'd like to try and parry. Oh, no. I will say go ahead and make that roll. (laughs) Uh, That's a nine. And that might be a modifier of plus seven, so 16. Parry is something you do on your turn, I think. So no, parry is when you're attacked, uh, and you haven't necessarily uh, acted in parry, your round. Parry just adds to your AC. It's a combat option. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make his attack roll, considering your parry, but your lack of armor. Mm-hmm. A 15 yeah. is his total. <clears throat> um... My my bonus AC is plus four, and I'm not quite sure what my uh, out of armor. I'm not sure that your bonus is eight is four. How is that possible? Um, that's uh, because of my class and stuff. I think that it switches to the AC plus four instead of the plus two. I'm You're not talking sure about where the it came from in the rules, but. Because you have, um, if you parry, it's, uh, yeah, it's a plus, plus, plus four for plus fighters, four. dwarves, and elves. I just think that's something you have to do on your turn, though. You have to uh, do that instead of attacking. No, it's in your initiative round, and if you haven't been your turn in initiative, you can parry. And okay. we're somewhat out of initiative. 
slash in back in it. So let me let me take a look. I hate breaking game pace to do this stuff, but it's kind of important. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing defensive fighting, emphasizing defense more than offense, you have a oh, plus man. two AC bonus, which you could do. I'll I'll let you do that. It would use up your turn effectively. Yeah. But that's going to give you a plus two um, AC bonus. It's a now, plus four I, because I'm a fighter. Okay. Um, I, your base I armor it. class unarmored is AC 12. So that's where you're getting the 16 from. So 12 uh, plus four yeah. is 16. Okay. So he he oh. tries this, this leaping attack with his claws lunging towards you and you basically just kind of turn and pivot and he sort his claws sort of rake through your robe but do not penetrate your flesh and he kind of topples off to the side. Yep. Top of the order, Bane. You said he toppled off to the side. Is he in a, a vulnerable state? Um, He's not wearing any armor. I'll attack him. Okay. Make that roll. 24. That is a hit. Two on the damage. Okay. Sarah, you have a sword. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm just going to take a moment to check this armor. See if the left arm of the armor detaches uh that would be your entire route that's fine okay claude yeah i parried so i have no action that's right have i'm gonna run up by bane and uh take a swing at this uh gremlin go ahead nine again that is a miss old rat Running up, up with the long sword. Make your melee. At it. Hmm, that's probably not going to work out. My plus to hit. Uh, that, yeah, that's lower than Haberter, so no. Okay, you swing. And the very deft Landry that he is somehow ducks that. Lieber, you're up. All right, I'm swinging. I have 12. Hmm. Sometimes it's hard being an adventurer. Just a ring of blades over his head. Yeah, you guys are like <laughs> swooping in. He's he's just like, ah, like he's moving he's like so chaotically <laughs> that it's like hard to hit him, right? Got that old instinct. Okay, he is going to attack. Let's see who. Again, Claude. And he misses. Raking out with claw number two. He is going to attack. Who's it going to be? Oldrad. This time his attack roll is a 17. That hits. Five in pajamas. Noted. He claws out ah! three, five damage at you. This brings us back, in fact, to Bane. I'd like to do a uh, shot specific. I want to cut his hands off at the wrist, or his hand off his his, right. his primary hand at the wrist. Take your shot. Uh, Fifteen. Miss. Damn. Sarah, you have discovered that if you take one minute, you could take apart this armor and repurpose it for yourself. Um, that's too long. Uh, is there a leg lying there loose somewhere? Yes. Ah, uh, better idea. Slip my arm in the boot, in the leg armor, and I've got I've got kind of a shield. So okay, do Walk. that and get ready. Yep. Claude, you're up. <clears throat> well, I'm not liking this guy, so I'm going to go ham on him with my sword. That's all I have, so. Proceed. 
That's a 19. Hit. Finally. I hope to do better this time. Seven. You carve into his flesh. He lets out a bestial sort of growl at you. Haberder. Feeling inspired by Claude's mighty blow. I will swing as well. Uh, 20, not natural. That is a hit. Give me that damage. Okay, six. One damage. Old Rat. Uh, I'm going to fall back and heal myself. That's Indeed. You initiate uh, your prayers and you yes. begin to conduct your spell of healing yourself. Lieber. Yep. Would I be able to reach him and touch him without uh, too much risk? You could. Because I want to try to, to touch him and uh, perform command to tell him to sleep. Ooh. Ooh. A spell. All right. Um, let's do that. What does he have to do with regard to sleep, if anything? Uh, any or rather, to... sorry, command. This is command, right? Command, yes. Okay, so for command, actually, you have a range of 10 feet. Oh. So I'll stay a little further back. All right. Uh... You call upon the power of the one true God. And you look at him and point and you you tell him sleep. And he does. He just his eyes wobble in his head and he just drops to the ground. To the ground. You guys look in a little bit of awe as this feral mutated form of the man who you saw during the day as Landry is now laying unconscious on the marble floor of the armory. And you see Lieber kind of standing there, his fingers still outstretched, having just uttered this command. What is each of your reactions? We'll start with Claude. Kill him. Averter. I'd like to uh, run this thing through all at the same time. Is that the consensus? Does anyone try to stop anyone else from killing Landry? I just ask. You're putting a boot on your hand. Oh, okay. Never mind. Anybody who's in the immediate five foot vicinity of Landry. Okay, so basically Claude and Haberder just run their swords into him, and he kind of gasps, and then he stops moving. You see that this blood on your blades as you as you pull them out looks very coagulated and kind of dark. Mm-hmm. And as you guys stand in the once again silent armory, looking at these four sets of armor that are no longer moving around and the now dead mutated form of Landry, you might begin to wonder if indeed this chateau is cursed. And that is where we will end this episode of The Lamenters, everyone. (laughs) Thanks, as always, for tuning in, for liking and subscribing. If you want to support the channel more, you can do so by joining us on my Patreon for as whatever money you can choose to afford on a monthly basis. Um, But we appreciate you guys, and we hope to see you soon on the channel. Peace out.
Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button, and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.